Hello again. Here's the uh, up updated hardware. I've just uh, changed a couple of things, <coughs> as I mentioned before. The first thing is I've changed the uh, DAC chip to something uh, with a higher resolution. Um, this time it's an LTC2602 part from uh, Linear Technologies. Um, only available in MSOP 8 package, so it's uh, it's quite quite a difficult thing to, to work with, hence the adapter um, here. Um, I've also tried um, an analog devices uh, 5663 part really the there's there's not much in it from a spec point of view between that and the linear technologies part the analog devices part here on this adapter here is um, actually a fair bit cheaper probably about 30 percent cheaper than the linear technologies part the reason why I've not um, left it in for this um, and, and the software is um, built to work with both so it's pretty straightforward I can use either uh, one, one configuration change rebuild and, and reprogram and, um, and it's, so it's easy to switch over what I found with the analog um, part is the um, when you set a zero zero volt or a zero a code of zero in into the DAC actually the two channels were quite unbalanced one of them had um, an offset voltage of about eight millivolts um, and the other one about two, whereas the linear technologies part um, is about two two millivolts on both channels. And I just thought that you know that's 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 quite a big difference. All right, well eight millivolts is not a lot, but it's uh, you know it's significant enough. Um, so I've uh, I've decided to stick with the linear technologies part just for now. Uh, I do have a second uh, a second chip when I when I ordered them I ordered two. So I'm just going to try the second chip and just see see if they if I get similar results. Uh, because as I say the cost the cost uh, differential um, is fairly significant. The um, from the um, from the design point of view though once you're above the um, the threshold both 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 DACs have some kind of offset error right at the at the, at the ground level and uh, but once you're above that both parts perform equally comparably uh, there's really no difference um, uh, no difference between them um, I did find the AD part um, can be slightly more unstable than the linear technologies part it doesn't 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 handle driving into capacitance as well as um, as well as the linear technologies part so more attention needs to be paid to the low pass filters and so on that, that are on the output uh, linear technologies part seems to be a little bit more forgiving in that regard as well so that's the setup the, the other thing I wanted to mention about the um, the hardware that probably didn't mention last time is the digital and analog um, circuitry both have two separate uh, both have their own regulator um, this power power uh, supply simply a, a, a switch mode wall wall type power supply nothing sophisticated or special uh, but there are two separate um, regulators um, simply because uh, noise reasons I've spent a little bit of time looking at noise on this because in order to um, um, follow through the measurements I'd, I'd, I'd taken from the uh, microchip part which was the 12-bit DAC um, I needed to reduce the, the noise levels in order to look at the um, look at the ripple on the output now as it turns out um, going from 12 bits to 16 bits um, which is what I've done here with this this part and then um, I'm modulating the output of this again uh, extending it by th further two bits so I've got an effective 18 bit digital to analog converter the ripple that I could see on the output before is completely indistinguishable um, it's clearly there we, I, I know it's there obviously um, but it's well below the noise levels that, uh, that I can measure so for all intents and purposes it no longer exists that that noise is gone and that that would make sense because that's one sixteenth of um of about a millivolt uh which which brings it way down below where where i could measure the other the other thing is in order to to take these measurements i've changed the test setup slightly um i found using the hp 34401 meter um, that uh, ground um, connecting the the zero volt side to the board would um, introduce noise, and that's obviously some kind of earth loop, um, presumably because the meter is ground referenced. So I've um, I've switched over to a battery powered meter. Um, it's a Fluke 289. Uh, let me just zoom out. Uh, the other the other thing I've also done is um, switched over to a scope that's got a bit more resolution and a bit more capability so that you can see the test set up now um, the main thing to keep in mind apart from the, there's only one uh, one obviously earth reference part now which is the scope everything else is fully isolated the uh, meter is tracking the fluke meter is tracking the ADC 
um, on board ADC uh, within about 200 or 180 odd microvolts uh, and that that's right across the range so it's pretty linear um, it verifies that the ADC is is, is working well um, it also verifies that um, that it's that it remains linear acro across the range that I need it to um, so 200 microvolts is uh, is pretty good and that that can ultimately be trimmed out later on the trace you're looking at on the scope let me just zoom that in there is the monitored output of the DAC so this is the signal that would ultimately be fed to the regulator reference this is the reference voltage it's an AC coupled signal because I'm, I'm looking at the AC part rather than the DC part um, what you're looking at there is some in, inherent noise in the overall circuit uh, and again it's sort of somewhere around about the 160 microvolts uh, level which is what I'm, I measured last time the little bursts you're seeing there they're happening about um, three times a second 3.1 times a second that is the analog to digital converter uh, sampling. Um, now the reason why that noise is appearing on the output is the analog to digital converter is um, imposing that noise on the output because I'm not buffering the signal going to it. Um, now I've chosen not to do that because it shouldn't be necessary. Obviously I'm trying to keep the, the part count down but it's um, but it is injecting a little bit of noise. In the in the overall um, circuit it should be negligible um, I'll bear that in mind. There is the, the the right thing to do would be to add a buffer. Um, the problem with adding a buffer is I will almost certainly have to add a dual supply rail to the to the op amp that would be the buffer, and that's just going to add complexity because I'm going to have to find that negative rail from somewhere. And um, you know, an important part of the original design goals here was to keep this as simple as possible. So, you know, adding a part is going to add to the bill of materials. It's going to add to the cost, and it's just yeah, it's just just probably probably not a good idea I'm going to try and avoid it so um, anyway I, I, I know the issues there um, I, I'll just just keep that in mind um, there's nothing really else I can show you on the the hardware setup it's pretty straightforward I think it's as it was before what I'll do now is take you through the software and show you some of the measurements and see, show you the results I'm getting okay see you in a minute